So today we're looking at a uh, 40 horsepower Evnerd E-Tech motor. Uh, the 40s on through the 60s all use the same exact lower unit gear case here. Uh, ours right here uh, feels like it's missing some uh, pinion teeth uh, or uh, some ring gear teeth inside the lower unit. So we're going to go ahead and drop it down, pull it apart, take a look today. To start dropping it down, we have these uh, two bolts on each side, so four bolts total that we'll undo, these little 15 millimeter uh, bolts. And we have a 15 millimeter bolt right here and a 10 millimeter bolt holding on our uh, our little uh, thrust adjustment here. And uh, once we remove this, there'll be another bolt underneath that that we'll remove. So six bolts and I'll hold this lower unit case on here. So we'll go ahead and start undoing all those. So we'll go ahead and uh, undo these bolts in here now. So it's gonna be that 15 millimeter bolt right there and then this 10 millimeter right up here and we'll drop that down and be able to get out our other bolt behind there. So we'll go ahead and move our little trim tab here and up inside there, there's another bolt uh, towards the forward end of the motor and that's our next bolt to remove. So we'll get that guy out of there as well. So we've got our sixth bolt out of there. And just to correct, that was a uh, it's a 13 millimeter bolt up inside there, an 11 millimeter bolt that held on our trim tab, 16 on uh, this bolt here and 15s all around these four. And note, we did leave uh, this one on here just to help support the weight of lowering it. So when we do break it free, it's got a little bit of space there to drop down, but it won't come crashing off. We also have to disconnect our shift rod. And uh, these might actually be American size bolts, but with all the algae growth and corrosion on them, the metric sizes work pretty well. And so our next step here is to remove our lower cowling basically this plastic part here from both sides of our motor that'll give us access uh, to our shift rod just connect that so we have one little eight millimeter bolt up there and a couple on the back side here holding it on and one right down there so we'll go ahead and get all those pulled off We've also got our tilt controller here that we're going to want to go ahead and just undo that connector. So we'll just unplug that there so this will all come free. Oh, looks like we missed one. We can go ahead and remove this. Try not to drop any of our screws in the snow. So we've got uh, both sides of our cowling off here. And what we actually want to get at to release our shift rod is going to be this little bolt right in here where our socket is. So that little bolt in there holds our shift rod on there. So as we remove this last little bolt, the shift rod will pass right down through here and uh, we'll take out our last bolt holding on our lower unit. So this last bolt here and the whole thing will drop right on down for us. So we've got our bolt out of our shift rod there and uh, just note that's a uh, 3 8 uh, socket to get that bolt out from the uh, shift connector there. So we'll go ahead and take this last bolt out, drop our lower unit down. And there we are. So we've successfully got our lower unit here off of our motor. Next thing we're gonna do is look at uh, replacing our water pump and uh, also tearing apart this lower unit and look at uh, the ring gears and pinion gear inside of it and see uh, what's going on with them, see if there's anything uh, the matter that's uh, preventing this motor from uh, shifting properly. So now that we got our uh, lower unit off of our motor here, we're going to go ahead and inspect our water pump, see what the impeller looks like on that. So we're just going to take these four bolts off here. So we'll use our 3 8 socket. 
break these four bolts free here. So 3-8 socket breaks all four of these bolts free. We can go ahead and just wiggle this on up here. There's our impel. So, actually doesn't look like in too bad of shape. It's obviously pretty old, and uh, the fins are bent backwards a little bit. We'll go ahead and take it off and uh, replace it with a new one. The fins will be a little bit more uh, straight out with a little more tension against there. It'll just create a little bit stronger water flow that way. And so a couple quick things about your impeller here. It actually uses what's called a uh, like a little jam or wedge system to uh, secure itself to the drive shaft so you can see where we have this flat part there and also inside the impeller we have this little cutout part there so we use a little wedge and that prevents the impeller from just spinning around the drive shaft uh, as it turns. Of course it just wedges on the one way. To get the impeller off, oftentimes with that wedge system uh, it's uh, wet, it's stuck on there pretty good, uh, wedged on there pretty well. So you can take uh, a flathead screwdriver and uh, just from each side and then pry up and usually that'll uh, That'll help to pull it up there. One other thing to note when you're uh, replacing your impeller is you really don't need to ever undo this guy. There'd be no reason to. That would just let all the uh, gear oil come out of your uh, lower unit and uh, flow out through there if uh, you tilted the lower unit. And uh, this is your shift rod. It's actually calibrated uh, by turning it, by spinning it in and out, calibrates the depth of the shift rod. It moves up and down to select your gear. So uh, when you remove the lower unit, if your motor's already shifting fine, you don't want to spin this either way. Uh, it's usually best to tape it or do something that will uh, prevent it from turning unnecessarily uh, to mess up the calibration of the shift. If it's um, not going into forward as well, or maybe not going into reverse as well, then you could uh, screw this in or out and adjust it to make the uh, actual dog push more into reverse or more into forward either way. To tighten these, we'll go ahead and do it in a little crisscross pattern to kind of evenly pull down on the housing. Typically, with uh, something this worn out, this old, if uh, we're going to actually keep using this motor, we'd replace the whole housing, water pump everything, uh, bring it all back to new. And that's only about uh, 75 bucks or so for all those parts. So that's back together. If that's all we were doing, then uh, we could go ahead and um, put our lower unit back on.